What's up guys, today we're gonna take a look at one of the most astonishing games I've ever seen. It's been played by Mikhail Tal, the former world champion. Here you can see him on the right playing against Jan Bobby Fischer, even though it's not the game that we're gonna analyze today. And on this photo you can see Tal trading his hands for the next chess matches. Well, obviously he was kidding here, just as I'm doing right now, and let me stop with that and come back to chess. Here Tal is playing black against the German strong grandmaster Aspi Klutz, uh, who is playing white. White played knight to f3, black played pawn to d5, and what's really cool about this game is that at the end Tal almost checkmated his opponent with his king. Even though it's impossible technically to do so, I almost wanted to say illegal, but yeah, that's exactly the reason why we love Tal, because so often he found some crazy ways to finish off his opponents. Alright, so the first moves I don't command that much, they are theoretical moves, both players are developing their pieces. Knight to c3, pawn to e5, d3, knight e7. A bit of an awkward looking move at first, but you can notice the idea relatively easily. The knight is going to go to either c6 or f5 from where it can possibly be delivered to d4, this great central square, and that's the point why black plays it temporarily on e7. White played queen e2, which is also a somewhat creative play. White decided to prepare long side castling, and that's the reason why he wants to vacate this square. Black goes bishop d7. Now, normally you don't want to play coward moves like that, because you want to play your pieces as forward as you possibly can. But in this particular case, there was a technical reason, tactical reason why Tal played his bishop to d7. He wanted to cover that b5 square from where the knight could possibly attack the black's queen and that c7 pawn. White played bishop e3, the queen is attacked, it has to go away, and white made this lone side castling, so as black. And at this point, uh, Lutz played pawn to d4, which also makes this game really interesting and a uh, really fighting game, as both players try to seize the initiative and play aggressively. It would be more prudent for white probably to just finalize his development and play something like pawn to g3 followed by bishop to g2 with a normal game, but Lutz wanted to play more aggressively, so he played d4, creating some tension in the center right away. And after this recapture and bishop takes d4, now there is a somewhat unpleasant opposition of the white's rook and the black's queen, and therefore Tal decided to move his queen to a6. Notice that not only Tal removes his queen from potential danger, but he also brings it closer to the area of the opponent's king, and it actually worked out really well in the future, and that's why we love Tal. Even though in this particular position it doesn't look like black has any chances to create attack against the white's king, but anyway, that is what Tal is preparing. And uh, by the way, I'm also planning to cover a few more interesting games from Tal in the next videos, so if you haven't already, consider subscribing, and let's move on. White played bishop to c5. Now, why was that move played? It's because the bishop on d4 is somewhat, you know, hanging. In the next moves, black is probably gonna move his knight somewhere to f5 or c6 and attack this bishop. And white decided to secure this bishop right away, so he played bishop to c5. Black played knight f5, simply continuing his development. And at this position, uh, white decided to play king b1. He was probably a little bit nervous that this king is a little bit exposed due to the, the pawn moved forward to c4, and he decided to play it closer to you know safer squares. Now, how would you play in this position? Let me ask you this question. Think about this for a second. I'm asking you because it's actually a great illustration of how you can learn to play attacking moves in a really easy way. The way to do this is to focus your attention on opponent's half of the board and ask yourself how can you move your pieces forward onto opponent's territory and attack something. If you apply this simple technique in your games, you'll find a lot of attacking moves easily. In this particular position, really, there is, I guess, just one move which is on the white's territory. You can also play rook e8, and that's obviously fine, attacking the white's queen. But if you want to play on the white's half of the board, bishop a4 is the only move which attack something at the, and at the same time does not you know lose a piece so I mean it's not an obscure move and that is what Tyler played 
Now this attacks the white's rook on d1 by the bishop, therefore white has to do something about that. He traded off the rooks and played queen to g4 because somehow he needs to develop his uh, king side pieces, so he played queen g4 attacking that knight on f5. A lot of players at this position would simply protect the knight by something like pawn to g6 for example, but Tal always looked for ways to uh, trick his opponent and to do something more aggressive, so he played queen to e6. Sacrificing that bishop on a4 and somewhat even inviting white to take this bishop, because in case this sacrifice is accepted, definitely black would penetrate into white's territory with queen to e1 check, followed by rook to d2 check, and even though in this particular position there is no straightforward continuation of the black's attack, by the way, notice that the knight is pinned, so it can't go to d4 right away. Uh, even more so, black is probably have to waste the time to protect this knight by playing something like pawn to g6, but nevertheless, the white skin is really exposed, his pieces are stuck there on the king side, doing nothing, and therefore, despite of sacrificing the bishop, black has a very promising position here. Or coming back to the actual game where white decided not to take that bishop on a4, which is probably seriously risky playing against Tal, and he played a more normal move, bishop goes to e2. Now, let me ask you one more time, how would you play here if you're black? Again, this is a really practical exercise, because the exact same technique can be applied in almost any middle game position and can help you win numerous blitz games and over the board games as well. And the technique is still the same, think about the ways how we can move forward, possibly onto opponent's territory and attack something there. And with that in mind, you may notice the move like rook to d4 attacking the queen, or the move which Tal played, which is rook to d2, which is not really an attacking move right away, but nevertheless it takes aim at that bishop on e2, and of course it's now very close to the white's king, which is something that white should really be nervous about. White played rook c1, bringing his last piece into play, which is a really useful thing to do, and black replied with pawn to g6, protecting the knight so that the black's queen can do something more aggressive and more interesting. White played bishop f3, removing this bishop from the attack of the black's rook, and because of that black also has to move his bishop, so previously basically if white would just grab this bishop on a4, black would be able to recapture the white's bishop on e2. But now once the white removes that bishop from the denture, black has to do the same, so he played bishop to c6, the bishop traded off, and white played knight to d5. Can you notice the white's attempt here, what is he gonna do next? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. If you can find it, write it down in the comments below. Yeah, why prepared the move knight to e7? Really cool tactical idea, taking advantage of the pinned knight on f5, white is get getting ready to jump on e7 and win the black's queen on the next move. Of course, Tal noticed this threat and he played queen to c5. White replied with queen to e4, creating one more aggressive attempt queen to e8, which is just checkmate. So black played b6, preparing this escape square for the king, but white insists he plays knight to f6, and this time he prepares checkmate from another angle, from the a8 square. And that's another thing which I really like about this game, is that these are really fighting chess. White is not just, you know, protecting his position, he's constantly looking for ways to counterattack, which again makes this game really exciting. Black played c6 to close that diagonal, but now white goes queen e8, check, taking the king, black goes rook d8, and now queen takes f7. At first it may seem like white is doing really well, he just grabbed the pawn, he's somewhat harassing the black's king, but black has some ideas from his side as well. He plays queen to d6, which takes aim at this knight on f6, potentially, for example, if black would continue with rook to f8 on the next move, attacking the queen and the knight. But even more so, he's gonna move this queen forward to d3 to attack the white's king. At this point, white played knight e8, attacking the queen, and so black plays queen to d3 check, One go white goes king a1, which is forced, and now black goes rook d7, because notice that in this position white is actually threatening queen c7 check, so black should be really careful. He plays rook d7 to stop that, white replies queen to e6, which also attacks that pawn on c6, therefore black protects it with his 
king and white plays pawn to a3 to prevent potential back rank mates and just to give some more free space for his king. Here black replied rook to e7. At this point the white's queen and his knight are attacked, therefore white plays queen to g8 to keep both of his pieces and black goes knight to d4. Finally black starts his counter attack. Now he's ready to deliver check either from b3 or from c2 which forces white really to do something and white plays knight to d6. He also wants to counter attack. In this position Tal did something really provocative and a little bit scary. You know, the normal move definitely would be king goes to c7, which you know, removes king from check, attacks the knight, and it's pro it was probably the best move to play. But Tal decided to do something more provocative. He played king to a6, and al although at this particular moment this king looks safe there, but the big problem here is that white can continue chasing the king by playing queen to c8 check first. So the king already has to move forward to a5, which is already a very exposed position for the king. But that's not even the end, because white can continue chasing the king, which is what he did. He played pawn to b4, and now the king has to move forward. Then white played queen to a6 check, and the king goes to b3. And this is like a really unusual situation in chess, where the black's king, right from his position on c8, kind of made this march all the way forward to the white king residence and now this king all of a sudden is taking part into the black's attack. At this point white played rook b1, he was also probably hoping to take advantage of the exposed position of the black's king. But there is something that black can do here. Can you find the winning move for black here? I'll give you a few seconds to find it. If you can do it, write it down in the comments below. Congratulations if you can find it, it's the move queen takes b1. Black is sacrificing the queen because on the next move he delivers straightforward checkmate with rook to e1. A very sudden situation where the black's king is actually playing the leading role into the black's attack in the middle game, no, in the residence of the white king. That's why I said in the beginning that it's one of my favorite games of tile. I hope that you enjoyed it just as much as I did, and if so, don't forget to hit the like button. Also consider subscribing, because just like I said earlier, I'm gonna be making more videos with the games of Tal that I really enjoy.